I was expecting to say here, the iPhone is a huge winner. Blow it out of the park winner. iPhone, not the case. Seven years ago, I bought the Google Pixel. Up until about a week ago, I was using the Google Pixel until I bought what I'm filming on now, the iPhone 14 Pro. Now this video is going to compare my experience using the iPhone, which I used for seven years prior to the Pixel. So I used iPhone for seven years, Pixel for seven years. Now I came back to the iPhone. I came back to the iPhone because uh, Google's service, Google Fi, they canceled my service. And so for that reason, the Google Pixel only has one SIM card and it's really annoying when you have to take out a SIM card and save SIM cards and all that nonsense. So I'm back with the iPhone. This video, I'm going to compare my experiences. It's gonna be about the usability. Which phone is easier to use? I'm gonna talk about the biggest advantages of each phone. I'm gonna talk about the most annoying things. I'll talk about things like WhatsApp. Is WhatsApp easier to use on iPhone or on Android? Customer service, who has better customer service features? We'll compare that to all the price. What are you getting for the price? I'll start with the iPhone, talk about things about the iPhone, then I'll go to Android, and then we'll have an overall score. Then I'm gonna tell you the biggest disappointment with the iPhone and the Android Pixel. There's one thing, biggest disappointment across the whole platform. I'll share that at the end. There's a few things I didn't rate and then there's a few things TBD. So let's jump into it. There's two giant, giant pluses on the iPhone. One, facial recognition. It has so many uses, so many. It's just beyond useful. That alone made me excited to switch back to the iPhone because of how annoying the Google Pixel was uh, signing in. We'll get to that. The second thing is the AirDrop. The AirDrop, if you have a MacBook like I do, that is just so, so easy. The closest thing that Android has is you upload it to the Google Photos. You have Google Photos saved in your browser and then you get it to your computer that way, but it takes a lot longer depending on your internet connection. AirDrop is quick, speedy, super speedy. Now the absolutely most annoying thing that Apple does, shame on you, Apple, shame on you. Do not give me a lightning cable for my phone but on the MacBook, you only have USB-C. What are you doing? I bought a MacBook with USB-C only. It must have been at this point five years ago. It may have been six. It may have been eight. I'm not sure. But I walked in there and they said, it's the way of the future. Everyone's going to have this, man. Just get it early. Don't worry about it. In a year, everything will be USB-C. Still not. Annoying as hell. Stop it. Knock it off. Talking to you, Apple. Apple wins on customer service by a long shot. Okay, number one, they just get to the point. How can I help you? Google software, they don't help you and they say, how are you doing? And if you don't like answer, they don't answer you back. It's like, look, I don't know you. This is not a relationship. I do, who cares how I'm doing? Let's just get into it, shall we? On the other hand, Apple is asking me, hey, what steps have you taken already so that we don't repeat anything? Wow, I was so relieved to find that out. In fact, on the Pixel, for the past maybe two years, I didn't even reach out to customer support. I didn't even reach out to them. It was so bad. Now, it wasn't always like that. Back in 2016, 17, whenever the phone came out, the customer service was super good, actually. You could log on on your phone right then and there and get a problem solved by somebody who was probably using the Google Pixel. It was awesome. Now it's worse than shitty, not even usable, useless. <laughs> that wasn't bad enough. Google Fi customer service, they are trying to kick you off. You've seen this screenshot here, literally one minute after they said, how are, you, how are you doing? They're like, oh, I noticed you haven't responded in three seconds. Are you still here? If I don't respond right away, they're gonna cut me off there. That is so annoying. Battery, iPhone, clear winner, clear, clear winner. It's actually incredible. I'm going on a charge more than a whole day and I'm, a, I'm an active user. Android, it, when it was brand new, it would have been you know good, but less than a day. iPhone definitely wins there. The camera, now I'm not a technical guy. I don't know the tech specs. I'm, I'm gonna give actually the edge to uh, Apple here. I'm gonna give the edge to the iPhone. I'm posting up some pictures now that I took. You guys can weigh in on the comments. I'm not really sure. They're both very good cameras. So who wins? I'm not sure. I will say in night sight mode, Apple camera has that and it automatically turns on and you can, you can adjust the exposure if you just want like one, two or three seconds. Whereas on the Pixel, you have to scroll. It's annoyingly to the left. So you have to like, there's two clicks you gotta do to get all the way over to the night sight function on the Pixel. Video, video giving to the iPhone. I think even Android users understand that the iPhone has a better video. I did a video last week actually, um, and I compared, right when I got the phone, I had a look at it and I compared the two. I made some initial um, commentary about it. And one half of the video I filmed in with the iPhone 14 Pro, the other half I videoed 
with the current version of the Google Pixel. The common settings, Apple gets easier to use, things like turning up and down the brightness, getting the ca getting the um, the camera and the flashlight from a, from a screen, turning on airplane mode. These are all things that are a little bit easier on the iPhone for sure. And when I mean easier, I just mean less clicks. You, you know what I'm gonna do, it takes less clicks. The look of the phone. The Pixel looks nice for sure. And when I, would, when I would travel, people would ask me what it was. It looked a little different, but I'm gonna give this to the iPhone. The iPhone has a more sleek, sexy look. The back tap. The Google Pixel has a back tap as well, uh, but it just doesn't work doesn't work really well, it just doesn't work really well. The iPhone works really well and they give you the option for two back taps. Back tap is you can just, you know, I use the iPhone for a screenshot, two is a screenshot, three is bring up the camera right away and it works every time. Security and privacy, giving this to Apple, weigh in in the comments, I mean, I don't really know what's going on here, but visibly, Apple is asking you more so, hey, they're making you aware more, hey, this app is doing this, that best app is doing this, the privacy things are popping up more. It seems as if I have more control and Apple is more conscious about providing good security. But I am curious to read the comments about whether I'm being uh, finagled with. Apps. Apple gets the win here. There's a lot more useful apps, popular common apps that are available on the iPhone than the Android. There was a few times where I wanted to use an app and it was only for the iPhone or there's a six month, a year delay before it comes to Android. Now, uh, something neat feature on um, iPhone is if you pay for a subscription, some apps allow you to change the icon of the app. Cool, unique. The lock screen goes to Apple, firmly goes to Apple. The lock screen on the Pixel would constantly unlock and open up in my pocket. Apple, that has not happened a single time. Thank you for that. Now, a negative about the iPhone is it seems to require a lot of extra clicks that the Pixel did not. This is a big negative. Now, granted, there are a lot of apps that I'm using that are from Google, Google Sheets. Uh, I am now using Google Maps. And so I'm not sure if like Google is sabotaging a little bit. Oh, let's make it a little bit more difficult to use it on the Apple products, but at the same time, they want you to use it regardless of where you're using it. So I'm unsure if this is conscious or not, but there are extra clicks. Additionally, outside of the Google apps on the iPhone, which I guess is semi-understandable, there's other things as well. Just one example, when I'm using Apple Maps, it, it, when I want to sort, sort by distance, I do a search on the maps, I want to search by distance, I have to click like, okay. I have to select search by distance and then click okay. Rather than on Pixel Maps, Google Maps, you just select by distance and it comes up obviously, which kind of makes a lot more sense. I do use the Google, the Google keyboard, the Gboard, and on the iPhone, something po it's, it's generally just less enjoyable to use. I think I talk about the keyboard later, but it also, this thing pops up where it says like, do you want to allow something to paste? And it constantly pops up and I constantly have to click allow and it's really annoying. Now the photo app, I'm gonna give this to Apple preemptively. I just remember when I was using Android, there would be various times I can remember super frustrating where I forget exactly, but I would download a photo or I would take a screenshot or I would, upload it to my computer. I'm not exactly sure, but I, I couldn't find it. Then I couldn't find it. I literally just couldn't find it. I don't know where it went. It disappeared. And that was tremendously frustrating. Okay, now two other, and then overall, uh, the um, the deleting of text, you know, that's a pretty common thing. Everyone's doing it, deleting text. Sometimes you have a lot of text to delete. The iPhone gets a slight win here because they allow you to speed up. If they know you're deleting a lot, they speed up the, but they speed it up too quick. On Android, it's too slow. So it's too quick and too slow, but too quick is a little bit better because if you have a lot of text, you can delete it quicker. And the text on iPhone, the text, if you need to get a confirmation code for an app or something, and it goes to your iPhone text, it brings it in automatically. Cool feature, Apple. So what's the overall score? We have, for the iPhone, we have two huge advantages. We have 12 more category wins. And then we have two negatives for extra clicks and the cable issues. That brings us up to, what do we have? 12. So Apple iPhone has 12, let's move on to the Pixel. The video will be back shortly, but I promised Reishi and Luna they could say something. The Pixel wins on the uh, back button. Whenever you're doing anything on the phone, you wanna go back, you simply just scroll from the left side and go back on any app, any anywhere, and it's way easier. iPhone, sometimes you can do that, sometimes you have to pull it from upwards, sometimes you have to click something in the app. Big win there for the Pixel. The Pixel uh, keyboard wins by far. I mentioned this already, but there's a, there's a few additional things. The predictive text. Now, I'm going to give a pause on this because I've just been using the iPhone for a week. So maybe they're getting better and I feel like they are getting a little better. I use it for different languages. So I'm typing in English. It's pretty good, but not always good. Like it said, the, uh, today I was trying to type something normal words and they gave me Redeemer. 
like when have I ever used the word redeemer? I was like trying to give like, like forgive or something. Redeemer, what? Or like unseen was another one. When does anyone ever use the word unseen? <laughs> On the iPhone, it capitalizes words. I've already said don't capitalize, don't correct anything because you're shitty at it anyways. And it still is doing that really annoying. Did not happen on the Google keyboard. Better at predicting in foreign languages as well. So I'm using this phone, I'm now learning Portuguese and even right away, it's predicting like correct words, which I'm, I'm shocked at, which is awesome. But it might be because I have learned Portuguese in the past when I had the Pixel. So are they remembering that and bring it in? Probably, so maybe Apple isn't as bad as I think, but all I know is the keyboard right now on Pixel is way superior. It's also better at predicting, you know when you type a word and you gotta, you know, you wanna add a space or just delete one letter in there? The, the, the keyboard on Pixel is way better at predicting where you're, where you're pointing your hand and where it goes, where Apple is not. You have to actually click and hold and then go like that. WhatsApp is way easier to use on the Google Pixel. Now, when let's say you have, you're searching for a name. You know, you've had a conversation with someone, you're searching for the name, you have the name, you, you send them a message. Now, it brings you down, the iPhone, WhatsApp on iPhone brings you down to where that message was, even if it was a year ago. And then you just have to scroll up. It's like, what? Alternatively, if you're scrolling down, let's say you, you, you have messages to reply to a week ago, two weeks ago, you're scrolling down, finding all those messages, replying to them. In that case, they bring you up. The, the WhatsApp on iPhone brings you up to the top, then you have to scroll back down. So they're doing the opposite in both ways. It doesn't make any sense. WhatsApp on the Pixel, you can select a bunch of images directly from the message thread. Huge superior uh, functionality. The iPhone, you have to click a few buttons. Again, you have to click a few to get with the same action. Additionally, if you want to copy uh, lines, a few lines in WhatsApp, on the Android, you can do a few lines. On the iPhone, you can only copy one line at a time. Both limit 30 attachments per WhatsApp message. The Maps, Google Maps, when here, when I bought the iPhone, I was with two friends, they were both using the iPhone and they were both using Google Maps. Well, highly superior. Reviews is huge on Apple Maps. They they're just have less reviews, it's less used, and they're bringing in reviews from Foursquare and different things. It's also outdated. I, I went to the gym yesterday and around the corner and there was no, no gym existed there. When you're moving on the Pixel, you can move and redo search in this area. When you're on the iPhone, you move and it automatically redoes the search, but in a really poor way. And on, on Apple Maps, you can only save to favorites. You only have one color to save. On the Google, if I wanna save different things, I have four or five different colors. They should add more as well, to be honest, but at least they have five. However, Apple does win. You know when you're looking at directions and you're trying to figure out walking typically which way to go, the that blue thing that comes out, the Apple wins there for sure. Or maybe it's just the, the iPhone that wins there, but it's it's accurate. Whereas on Google, I would ignore that because it was so often inaccurate. It, it made no sense to pay attention to it. The translation app, Google wins, huge win, huge win here. Uh, the Apple, it does not pronounce words from both languages. Let's say I'm learning Portuguese, but I know Spanish, so I'm having translating Spanish to Portuguese. I can only, listen to the pronunciation of one of the two words. Huge, de huge, huge design flaw. They only have Spain, Spanish, yuck. And Google suggests different languages. If I, if I say Spanish up there, but I type in Russian, it's gonna say, hey, is this Russian? Or even if it's Spanish and Portuguese, very similar languages, it's still gonna know, hey, you mean Portuguese? Click, done, Apple, two more clicks. Calculator wins on the Pixel because, simply because you can edit. If I'm typing something and I wanna edit it, I can go back, click there and edit it rather than deleting it all out and type uh, all the letters again. Google Sheets, I use Google Sheets a lot. I'm not sure if you do. A huge win goes to the Pixel. There's just some, uh, going back to like, are they making the user experience worse by consciously? On the Apple, on Apple when I'm using the sh Google Sheets, it'll like reset, you know, if I'm down and scroll to the right, every now and then it'll reset and it'll go all the way up to the left, top left. That's hugely annoying. Win for the Pixel. Tinder wins on the pixel you can search the names you cannot do that on apple you can search your connections cannot do that on the apple you can copy let's say there's an instagram username you can copy that name on apple you cannot you actually have to type that out if you wanted to the filters are more fine-tuned the age and the distance are less um, less flexible on apple now notifications that surprise win goes to android here i'm surprised because they're not perfect but they're better unfortunately and surprisingly from the iPhone. You know, I have all of my notifications off, except for a very few apps. I want notifications to annoy me as minimum as possible. What I want is a simple icon to come up to let me know that I have notification. That's it, no vibration, no sound, no preview, no nothing. And only when I'm using the app, okay? The phone is not going to take my attention. The phone will get my attention when I give it to the phone. This is a productivity hack. Turn all of your notifications off. 
For a period of time, I made my phone black and white, but there was apps that it was, you needed color, so I had to change that back. But on the Apple, the functionality there is, is way limited. I have to like, you know, I haven't figured it out yet. I'm not sure if I will figure it out. I think it might just, I might just have to deal with getting full screen notifications on the bottom or the top. Now, the biggest weakness of the Pixel is that there is no facial recognition. This touches so much of you using the app so much and it saves so much time. Now, the Pixel had the facial recognition. They did away with it. Big mistake. They got to bring that back. I'm sure they will. But in addition, the, the fingertip, they have the fingertip and it just doesn't work so well. It doesn't work so well. I often had to just type, you know, I tried it three times and I typed in the code. Ugh. And additionally, I already mentioned it opens up the lock screen. It's just opening up now. I'm not doing anything. It's opening up. You know, I figured out a trick though. If you have it, typically, if you put it upside down, that will not open the phone, but not always. So you have it in your pocket and you'll come out and you're like, oh, I wonder what I did. I wonder what, what buttons my leg pressed in the last three minutes. And it breaks easily. I don't know if you can see this, but I have cracks up here. I have never used a cover for my phone, never, in 14 years. The iPhone, I never cracked once, Just I just don't drop it. It's easy to do, not dropping it. This one, maybe because of this camera here, but it seems to find the corner of the table and crawl off and fall. This has fallen so many times and I'm like, there's been a few times where I've been like, I put that on the table. How did it find its way, you know, with a couple inches? How did it find its way off? Um, so that's that, unfortunately. But I will say, because of the way the camera is, when you have it just flat on a surface, let's say you're using your computer, your phone is over here, I can actually use this pretty uh, easier than the iPhone because the iPhone has the camera only on one side. You know, when you're typing it, you know, it, it's like, you know, because it's not even. Okay, the Notes app on Apple and Keep on Google. This is the app that takes notes. I'm going to give the win here to Google because they have the undo feature, which is highly useful. Apple doesn't have it for some reason. They do have other features which seem to be useful, but nevertheless, uh, Pixel gets this win. Now, one thing I just wanna, someone, viewers, please help me out. When I'm using the camera on the Pixel, it makes sounds like like internal hardware or software is like moving and I can hear like little clicks when I'm using the camera, switching between settings. What's going on there? I'm just curious. It's kind of annoying, but not a big deal. It's just strange for sure. Apple doesn't do that. Have you been keeping track? If you haven't, I'll let you know. That is plus 11 for the Android, minus one for those negatives that I talked about. So that's 10. So technically, Apple gets the win here. However, hold on now. It's not a win in my, in my opinion. It is not a win. The seven years I was using iPhone, I had good memories of it. It was easy to use. And when I was going back to the iPhone, I was, I was like, oh, I'm glad to be going back to the iPhone. All of these annoying things on the Pixel, the iPhone doesn't have that. But it turns out they have just as many, if not more annoying things than the Pixel does. I was expecting to say here, the iPhone is a huge winner blow it out of the park winner, iPhone, not the case. I'm actually quite disappointed with what I've seen so far with the uh, things outside of facial recognition, the camera, the video. Uh, super disappointing overall, to be, to be dead honest. Now, on top of that, price. I paid $1,600 for one terabyte iPhone, okay? Uh, the Pixel doesn't have one terabyte, but for 510, it's 1100. That's $500, that's not insignificant money. I wanna comment on phone sizes, then I will get into the biggest disappointment of all the phones, Apple and Android. Now, the size of phones. I don't know why people buy the 6.7 inch phone. I have it, worst decision of my life. Okay, I'm <laughs> exaggerating, but it just doesn't make, after having it for a year, <clears throat> it doesn't make sense. It is, it's more visible in your pocket. It sticks out of your pocket more when you're, when you're putting it, it's harder to put in the selfie stick right here to record videos. It's harder to type. It's just more awkward of a phone. It doesn't make any sense. But unfortunately with the Pixel, if you get the uh, Pixel 7 or the Pixel 7 Pro, there's like, there, there's like significant differences in the quality. So whereas the iPhone, there's not really significant differences. It's just kind of a bigger phone. Are you ready for the biggest disappointment of phones? The assistants. Siri and Google Assistants are the biggest disappointments. I don't even use them anymore. Besides being kind of funny every now and then, and you know, they're just not useful. Now, in my video I did last week, someone said like Google Assistant is, he, that was one of his things, why he has Google Assistant. And I was like, wait, am I missing something? Now, granted for the last year, I didn't use 
the Google Assistant because I just know it didn't work in the past. So I just stopped using it. So have it, has it improved in the past year? I mean, what's so good about Google Assistant? Asking for weather, asking to play a song. I can do that with my hands. It doesn't take any time at all. And we know how many, how much we have our phone on, the, you know, our eyes on the, the phone anyways. It's like movies, 3D. I remember my dad took me to my first 3D movie like, I don't know, 15 years ago. And it was so average. And it's so average now, but it's supposed to be awesome. Some people like it. The 3D in the movie theaters is like the assistant on the phones. It's just underwhelming, totally underwhelming. The Fit apps, Apple Fit, Google Fit, I think they might be called. I, I didn't really use them, so I can't comment on them, but I know that's a big feature for, for a lot of people. Now I did check it out for this video and I've got to read my notes here, but my heart rate was 89 on the Google Fit and my Aura Ring, which I just got recently, was 85. So that seemed to be pretty accurate. And you get your heart rate, I think, by putting your finger on the phone. They also breathe your respiration. You just point the phone at you, the camera, and you breathe normally and it, and it counts your respiration. That was kind of cool. TBD also, the, the calendar, I'm using both of them and I haven't really seen a clear winner on there. And the browser, the Safari versus Google Chrome, not seeing a clear winner there. Weigh in in the comments. I'm curious what are the features I might want to pay attention to to figure out which one's better for me. Two ties, email. On both phones, the emails don't load real time. Like when I'm in the email and I click reload, give me all the emails that I know I see on my computer, but not on the phone. It doesn't do that. Apple or Android doesn't do that. It like waits. This, this is really annoying when you're like headed to the airport and of course you forgot to uh, download your emails um, to get your flight ticket and then you're like doing it on the way and it doesn't go until like, you know, 30, it takes like 30 minutes or something. I'm, maybe it's a setting I'm doing wrong. And the other thing is alarm clock. Please, can we figure this out? Am I the only one who wants this? It's not a crazy request here. I don't want to wake up to the same sound or song every morning. I don't. I want an application, an alarm app that says, hey, here's a dozen songs or a hundred songs or a million songs. Cycle through them. Give me a new song every day to wake up to. Why is that so hard? I even downloaded a few apps. Cannot find it. Can someone please, please help me find this app? Now, in conclusion, Technically, the iPhone wins, but in reality, especially given the price, I'm gonna give the Pixel the win. I'm very disappointed, and my expectations were a lot higher than the reality of this phone. And there's so many things that take a little extra time that in total, it's a big disappointment, and they're fixable things, and I'm very surprised about it. In fact, next year, I'll probably go back to the Pixel if they bring in facial recognition. That is just a non-negotiable point. Now, I wanna comment on rivalry. The video I mentioned a few times, I did it last week, uh, my initial impressions between the, the, Google, the Pixel and the iPhone. Now I got a bunch of um, comments from uh, fans of Android, the Pixel system. And look, that's fine, but I don't get this rivalry. <laughs> Someone even called me like an Apple fanboy or something and it's like, dude, did you not watch the first three seconds of the video where I said I've been using the Android for the last seven years? So just knock it off with this rivalry. It doesn't make any sense. You, you don't work for Apple. If you like the iPhone or the Google Pixel, just like the phone. Who care? Why are you coming in my comments telling me, oh, iPhone for the win, Android for the win. Who the fuck cares? Just relax, calm down. This video is supposed to be like useful. So keep your comments useful. Till next time. Ciao.